Welcome to Tao Living, the Art of Living podcast with your host, Lou Corletto, where you will be supported to remember that you are the driver and not the vehicle so that you can walk your life in trust. My guest speaker is a 1977 graduate of Western States Chiropractic College. He's dedicated the past 45 years of practice to caring for humans and animals alike. The focus of his care centers on restoring mental, emotional, and physical well-being in order to optimize the human potential. Dr. J believes that the role of chiropractic is one of restoring balance in the human body so that the inherent intelligence within may function without interference. Dr. J teaches programs on adjusting and chiropractic philosophy of healing at universities throughout the U.S., Animal chiropractic care has also been an integral part of Dr. J's practice since 1977. He has worked with veterinarians nationwide, providing care for equine, canine, and feline clients. His veterinarian chiropractic work has been featured on the Today Show, on various podcasts and radio programs, and in multiple magazines articles. In addition to delivering care to his clients, he teaches animal adjusting in the philosophy of animal chiropractic to colleges worldwide, and speaks to groups on the national health care of animals. He's the founding member of the American Veterinarian Chiropractic Association and has received multiple awards in recognition of his, his success in advancing the field of veterinarian chiropractic. Dr. J's work with animals has been most recently chronicled in the award-winning documentary, Life Adjusted. Ladies and gentlemen, please... Help me welcome Dr. Jay Comeric. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you, I am so honored to connect with my next guest speaker for so many reasons. One, um, he's been a mentor of mine and a now I gratefully get to say a friend of mine for many, many, many moons. As you've heard in the intro, that's just a small taste of who this man is and what he has committed his life to and, and brought to the world. 45 years of active practice. That's uh, uh, an incredible feat by any means. An active practice at a high level, as you heard in the bio. He has been serving around the world for years. So Dr. J's, um, his, his deepest commitment, which is what I resonate with so much, is to assist people to remember the human potential, who you be, right? I'm using my vernacular, who you be, what you got and what you're gonna do with it. Uh, and to, to give an example of his commitment, he is now literally driving from uh, the Midwest, West Coast of the United States to the East, Southeast of the United States currently right now, and has pulled over to the side of the road in order to have this interview, right? So that's this level of commitment. That would have been easy to go, you know what? I just can't do it, Lou. Uh, too much going on. I'm on the road, yada, yada, yada. And so, you know, that's just a, a, a shining example of his willingness to be of service to, um, to those who are ready to play with his wisdom. So that being said, my friend, my, uh, my brother, my teacher, my mentor, Dr. J, thank you so much for being here. You bet. You bet. I'm so happy. Just thrilled. I was looking so forward to this. Uh, so Jay, I'd like to open up with this. Is A couple of days ago, I was interviewed for a, uh, a summit, and it was called the Biology of Trauma. And we went to a bunch of cool places. But one of the places that popped that I thought was interesting that I'd love to hear your insights around was when, speaking of empowerment, um, certain people, when practitioners of whatever sort uh, begin the process of empowerment by reminding like, hey, you've got this, you can do it, right? The power's within you. It scares the out of them. Meaning because they've grown up in a world where they were disempowered, right? This is healing's not up to me. You, the practitioner of whatever sort, is are supposed to fix me. Like I want no parts yeah. of it, right? You fix my life, give it back to me, and then I'll go enjoy it, kind of thing. So um, I gather over the 45 plus years, you've run into that uh, maybe a few times. And if so, one, when you first bumped into it, what was your like? Cause I have mine, like, 
huh, that's interesting. Uh, and most importantly for the listening audience, what tools did you use and maybe are still using to serve people when they bump into that place of first having the opportunity to remember who they be by taking ownership of their own flow? Well, what a wonderful place to start this meeting, you know, this, um, because it really brings us to the heart of chiropractic that when people are subluxated, you know, in that sense that it's not just this biomechanical thing, but this energetic neurologic thing that tends toward fear, anxiety, and worry. And so the very essence of our work, besides the fact that symptoms go away, it's wonderful to, you know, um, a good friend of ours says, you know, it's a positive side effect that symptomatology is resolved. But the bigger thing is, how do you open someone up to express who they are? And the first thing they've got to confront is, I live in fear. They don't even know it many times. I read a book. Somebody handed me a book years ago. It was called Fearfully and Wonderfully Made. Mm. And I thought, gee, that's a bizarre title. And, but, and it took me years to understand how much fear is in a subluxated individual, mentally, emotionally, on disconnect from their spiritual essence. So the fact that we are able to put our hands on someone and without opening our mouth, but just being able to create ease in a system where for the first time in their life, they're feeling the expression of life in their body and they realize, oh, this feels good. And it's way different than what they're carrying, which is a huge amount of fear, which keeps them from, you know, they, uh, there, there's a saying that you'll produce an environment consistent with the state of your nervous system. So if you're in a state of fear, you're going to create an environment that's fear based, fear ridden, protected, guarded. But when you start to open up and you realize, wow, there's a flow to life, there's a flow to innate intelligence. And you then learn to surrender fear and then you move toward trust. That's a, that's a <laughs> dig doggity day that, when that happens. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. So, so what, what I hear there and for the listening audience is when, uh, when Jay's saying, um, so, so this, this concept of uh, rapport or resonance, right. Um, when I'm in a, so basically like at the most basic level, if I've got a really crappy attitude and I'm in a shitty mood, I become a crap magnet, right? Because that's how I'm showing up. So what I'm putting out is becoming back to me. Uh, that's just a mental state. When your when your baseline functionality, which is your nerve system, when it is whatever it's emanating the most is what it's going to bring into your field, into your life and show up for you. So when Jay's saying, when your nerve system's all jacked up, um, and especially when it's driven by fear, then it's only going to continue to bring fearful based experiences into your life. And you're going to keep wondering, like, why is why why do I need to be, uh, you know, why am I always on guard? Uh, you know, how come I can't sleep because I'm on alert, right? I can't let myself settle into peace uh, because I'm afraid. And so getting the nerve system into a, a more peaceful, healthy state then literally shifts what you attract into your life on a regular basis, right? So that's what he was just articulating. Um, and, and that's on us, right? That's on us to do that, um, uh, to, to up-level our nerve system, to keep remembering who we be, right? Um, so on, on that flow, Jay, how else, what other tools do you share with people in order to um, bring trust back into the life? either maybe for the first time or if they've lost yeah. it to re-engage in it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, one, I think is just discussing that the possibility of that exists, that the possibility of recovery, discovery, expression, flow, these are concepts that are familiar to you and I, but to many people, you know, you talk about it, it seems like a woo woo concept, but it's life. This is life. These are the characteristics of the flow of life and intelligence and love. And so just having a conversation where, where someone entertains the possible, oh, this is a possibility for me. And then the then, you know, there's so many approaches. One for me, it is uh, chiropractic care first, begin by clearing a nervous system, opening it up so that they can feel the opposite end of a vigilant system. What does it feel like to have an open breath? Just the breath 
just being able to take a full breath that comes naturally, you know, and then paying attention to your own thoughts and words to see what type of expression, something maybe you've buried inside yourself that said, I always wanted to paint a picture. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to write a poem. I always wanted to speak in public. I always, whatever that is to see what surfaces for you. And um, so I, um, I, the first thing is possibilities. What are the possibilities? And re-engaging people with the concept of there are huge human potential possibilities mm. and, that, and getting excited about that. And then, then doing the work, uh, not, you know, randomly, but like actively daily morning, noon and night living this as a way of life that, well, I'm going to look for all the serendipity. I'm going to look for all the synchronicities. I'm going to look for who's calling me today that as you shift your energy, all of a sudden the phone, I will under no, and it's only because I know it's my nature. I love service. I've sustained my career 45 years through service on a daily, on a daily basis, eight, nine, 10 messages, emails, calls. Can you help me? Of course I can help you. I I can (laughs) right now while I'm driving, I can't do it, but you know, you, you open up to the possibilities of, and see what shows up and the universe is a reflective reflexive universe you know you you put a good intent to serve to do good to do art to do music to do poetry and everything is going to show up uh like it's almost angelic how it shows up uh to to help you and uh it's a very very mythical mystical process and uh but once you see that it, that's the way life works, then you're, you know, you're off to the races. Uh, love it. Walking in flow, creating serendipity, what people might, uh, uh, quote unquote, accidentally tap into that they call miraculous. Yet when, um, ladies and gentlemen, when you listen to what Jay's saying, he's inviting you to what's possible. That is this, this realm of what, when, when somebody only experiences once, every so you know multiple blue moons meaning not that often it seems miraculous when you learn to be able to walk in serendipity because you're in flow of your own life that happens on a regular basis daily uh so it's it's a different way of being and it's a different way of experiencing in life and that's what we're both inviting you to uh to right now in this conversation is one it's possible two we'll start giving you more and more tools on how to do that yeah So uh, as Jay was sharing, there was just popping my head a few things around um, one breath that it's, it's the biggest challenge that I've seen for years with people is when you bring up breath, like, well, I'm breathing, right? I'm like, well, no, you're not right. (laughs) You're experiencing, (laughs) you're experiencing a biological function called inhale, exhale. That's just enough to keep you on top of the planet right? That's not breathing. That's just a bi- what I call a biological breath, right? Learning to consciously breathe is a whole different game changer. And to, to access that through volition, because ladies and gentlemen, what you don't realize is either way, however you are breathing, you are informing the cells of your body. In essence, your entire being, everything, but on the simplest level, I am safe or I am not. So my breath patterns will reinforce that I should be afraid and scared and keeps me in fight or flight and stressed out. And I produce all this uh, uh, chemistry that keeps me in in that state. And I can intervene, change my breathing patterns and create a message to my system to inform myself that I'm at peace. I'm safe. I am enough. I'm more than enough. And that entire cascade of yumminess that unfolds from there. So, you know, please learn and tap into the power of breath for sure. Yeah. So it's the cascade. You use a wonderful word, a cascade, not only mentally and emotionally, but biochemically, you know, for you're taking a full breath and you feel open. You're going to think a loving, kind, compassionate thought. And that produces a chemical a consistent with Uh, You know, you produce a biochemical equivalent to the thought, and then it reaches the cell and reaches a receptor that's the match to that. And you then produce your own good feelings. And, um, you know, this is this is like the the greatest gift we can give ourselves 
and uh, to others is to teach this, that, you know, it's us, you know, we've met the enemy and it's us and we've also met the hero. It's us. And so, you know, that part, but, you know, when you think about it, it's really, when I think about who blazed the trail, as far as education for people, it's really the chiropractors who broke out of, who broke out to really open a discussion, one about expression, about life, about interference, and it can be interfered with through fear, anxiety, worry, trauma, and that can be, we can reverse that, and we can open the system them back up so that they can have a more fully expressed life so it's pretty amazing you know when you think about what we do and you really look at it and i don't care you can look at it just mentally about the philosophy that we're having a positive philosophy and then in addition to that then there's the neural neurology of it there's the actual neurology of it and the neural chemistry of it and then on top of it is like you hit the home run by getting a correction that is to be able to deliver the goods. Wonderful to talk about it. And we should all have a really good conversation to hold about life and expression and about interference. I mean, we should, that should, we should be working that clay every day, but to be able to deliver an adjustment, to deliver an adjustment, to free someone without, oh, you've been on mission trips. You know what it's like. You don't have to open your mouth. You just put your hands on someone and correct them. And all of a sudden you see the lights come on. What a gift. Mm -hmm. And this is what we get to do every day. And people, if, if you don't stay focused on that, you get sidetracked in your finances, in your relationships. If you get off purpose with your philosophy, if you get wrapped up in, in insurance where you're, you know, you're, you're doing things that sidetrack you from your work, you, you miss it. So, you know, the, there's a keeping it simple to be able to, practice this way every day is I'm, I'm convinced what contributed to my longevity of practice. In addition to the animals, the animals contributed hugely, but mostly just knowing what I was up to that I get, a, I get to give this gift every day. Mm. And I never, ever, ever, ever take that for granted. I, I realize how fortunate I am. <laughs> Beautiful. Sorry, just taking a note there for myself. So, um, one of the things Jay shared that I love so much is the um, you are who you've been looking for, right? You are who you've been searching for. <clears throat> so in that context, uh, you know, this is the message that uh, we both have, especially these last two years, especially these last two years, have been asking people, which is who's writing your script, right? So um, the matter of fact, just, um, whatever, 20, 30 minutes ago, before we started our, our, uh, live here for this podcast, for our conversation, I was inspired to do a quick Facebook live and it was about inviting people to reclaim their morning. Right. So I just put them through this process. Like, Hey, if you woke up this morning, you had no electricity. How would you feel like for the first hour? W would you be at peace? Be spe spe uh, specifically around that you couldn't access your phone in the internet. Right. And so not getting on social media, not getting on your email, does that stress you out or did it bring you peace? Because, oh, I've got a little time for myself, right? And I just went with the metaphor of like, great, what if it happens tomorrow? What do you do then? Like bringing them back into how much the um, allowing something, in this case, the internet, to distract us and lead us in the way it wants to lead us into yeah. other into other narratives, other stories versus so the whole invitation was start your day, right? Because I live in such a rural area. I still don't have a phone or internet up at, at my house. <laughs> I've got to come down to the studio to get access to internet. Um, and so that place of when we start our day, we start our day. We get to be intentional. How do I show up today? How do I choose to show up today, right? In what manner, what character? What's important to me? Who do I reach out to? Who do I contact? Who do I love up? Who do I allow to love me up? Uh, what's important for me? What projects am I after? Versus the other distractions is what the narrative wants me to go into. And a big part of that narrative is about how weak and broken I am, right? Versus the remembrance of how amazing you are, right? The unlimited potential of who you be that you're a spiritual being having a human experience and not, and not to use that as cliche, cool sounding words, but living into the authenticity 
of that statement. Powerful, right? That's yeah. powerful. Yep. So, so Jay, so Jay's also uh, affectionately known as the horse whisperer because he is, he's just got this connection when he's working with, well, with people, with the animal kingdom everywhere, but especially with equines, he just has this, ah, if, if you've, well, you can, and I'm not even sure, Jay, where can they get a, uh, access to view the uh, uh, Life Adjusted, the documentary about your life's work? You can go to YouTube and just watch it on YouTube. Okay. So when it first came out, it was a, it was a Netflix documentary. It was put into theaters around the, uh, the country was, and around it the was world. Netflix. It was on Amazon. Yeah, it went around the world. It's been in 50 some different countries. It's uh, yeah, we, it had quite a reach. It got several different awards, um, and that was all due to the producer and his wife, uh, Sean Nipper, and then his wife, Casey Flegel, who's a chiropractor. And um, it's man, we're getting a big storm here, so I hope the rain doesn't. Can you still hear me? Okay. I, I can. I, I see the clouds building outside your window. So first, your safety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, first your safety, yeah. my friend. If it starts changing on you, just unplug and, and get safe, right? Um, no, I'm I'm okay. I, I I'm I'm fine. I'm tucked okay. in here, fine. But the uh, the film got a lot of coverage. It's been around the world, and you know when people watch an an animal who who responds to human touch and sensitivity, and they realize, wow, there's something big going on, especially with a horse that's a thousand pounds, twelve hundred pounds, and they're watching this interaction. And he realized that horse knows what I'm up to. That horse is interacting with me and we're having, so to speak, a conversation. That's a, you learn something without knowing you're learning something. You're watching and realize there's something really magnificent going on here. So the, uh, besides recovery, that is a horse that's injured, has been traumatized and being able you know, to help them recover. You're watching this relationship. And animals have a way of uh, bringing out the best in us because they have no agenda. Talk about present time. They are really, really in present time with you. And if you're not in present time, they're going to bring you in present time in a hurry or you won't accomplish anything. Mm. So in order to really work on a big 1,200-pound horse, you've got you know, to be pretty present to, to accomplish that. And so, so you jumped right into it. that was going to be part of my question, which is uh, from your years of experience, when you are connecting with these sentient beings that are, are clear that if you aren't you as Jay aren't present, when you are not connecting with them, they want no parts of it. They're going to let you know. Right. And so what they're requesting uh, they, is, they, 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 yeah. So what they're requesting from you, the practitioner or the people that you teach to serve um, is look, if you're going to engage with me, show up, have enough respect to show up, be <laughs> present, right. And, and fully engage here. And then we can have, we can do some good stuff together. Right. And so, uh, watching you, when I watched you serve and knowing that same conversation, be it with people or any other sentient being that we're serving, what a great message, uh, and gift right there to take into our walking life. Right, so I'd like you to to uh, to to like unpack that some more, just in the concept of humanity, that how um, how we've are you know we, we're encouraged to lose that, be present and connect, and why it's essential to bring that back to forefront, that when we are in somebody's presence, have the respect to show up and be present authentically. Yeah, so I would love you to unpack that. Uh, one, the importance, the beauty, and how we can do that for those who have lost that ability. Yeah, that's, uh, it's huge. I, I would have to say that over the years that I would say it's the single most important skill um, th that I learned. That, and it, it is a skill to, to be present and listen. I mean, really listening with your hands. Also, when people are speaking that you're listening, you're not already thinking about what you're going to yeah. say, but the greatest gift we can give to someone is our presence. That is, I'm going to show up for you today. I wanted to see you. I was missing you. I, I get to be with you today. 
and you get all of me. I want to give you all of me, and I want all of you. And you know, you the people people can tell, horses can tell for sure, but people can tell when you're sidetracked. If you're thinking about your phone, or you're thinking about going and getting an email, or you're thinking about what's happening tomorrow, and you're out of the present, people have a sixth sense about that, and, and horses in particular. And the horse will demand, they, they bring out the best in us because you learn this skill because the horse demands it of you. And all of a sudden, then there's this byproduct that is so much bigger than you could ever anticipate. The feeling and the mood around a horse and a human interacting is just huge. I mean, it's, and people who are nearby will feel it. If you're watching me work or you're watching someone who is present working on somebody, you can feel this um, energetic field expand out to include you. So who's ever in the environment is benefiting just by the interaction of two present beings. And um, so anyway, very, very powerful. I, without, without question, you know, we use the term P. Jay, you just froze up on me there, brother. It looks like I lost them. Let me see what. Yeah. You're back, but we're got you muted. How's that? The better? You're, you're yeah. back. Yep. It, so, so it froze it froze up when you were when you were recapping that place of um, you know, that's the greatest gift when two people come together and it's presence, and you're about to say it's it's called present time consciousness. I'm not sure where you were going to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was just going, you know, the t term that uh, was coined by, was way back in the fifties was PTC present time consciousness, meaning right here, right now, you, me, that's all that matters. Not another thing is happening other than you and I interacting in this moment. And so I want to bring all of me. And if you bring all of you, who knows what the byproduct of that's going to be and um, how far reaching it will be. So the, the trick is, um, I have a friend of mine, she wrote a wonderful book called Choice Point, and that every second you're making the choice in the moment, in the point of being present, and you're choosing, you're choosing, you're choosing, and you're doing that all day long, that there's nothing, that's nothing more important than that. And um, so I, I, I would have to say that is probably the most important skill to learn besides your hands-on style and touch and yeah so if I, would, I would like to take that and unpack that a little bit for the listening audience which is um when when jay was saying from especially from his friend who wrote this book this choice point only if we're choosing to be present in our life are we making that choice to be present here right so when jay talked about this this field when two people or two entities two sentient beings are coming together in presence that field expands uh, to others around and not just others, but whatever's in that presence, plants, right? The animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, the human kingdom. Um, so that field, that's just if two beings are connected in that presence. What if more people did that in their walking life on a regular basis? What if more? So I'm, this is the request of the listening audience. When people say, well, what can I do about what's going on in U Ukraine? It might sound a little esoteric and kind of foo-foo, but if you were to be present in your daily con connections with other people and had other people do that, it makes changes at that level. It does. I remember when my teacher yeah. taught me this years ago, decades ago, when he first said it to me, I was first like, yeah, okay, I get the concept, but that's a little kind of far out there. And Pasquale was, you know, downloading to me this wisdom and I just didn't get it because my consciousness was not ready. I understood the concept intellectually, but to go outside of mind candy, like, well, that's a cool thought, but yeah, how does that work? Um, right. And now it's a walking, it's a walking place. So recapping when Jay was saying about choice point, what I was referring to earlier about distraction. If you're allowing something and someone else to keep you distracted, you are not making choice point. Something else is making you to focus on what they want you to focus on, whatever the narrative is, right? So it's up, it's imperative for you to choose what you choose, for you to focus on what you choose to focus on, meaning get the reins back of your mind, get the reins back of your life, and you 
choose what's important. If you study quantum physics, this is not a far reach. Now, who wants to study quantum physics? I do. I happen to like studying quantum physics. But if you study quantum physics and you realize there's a field of energy, there's a field of intelligence, and it extends infinitely in all directions, 360 degrees radial, and just like dropping a pebble into the pond, those waves go out. Now, sometimes they hit and they become something like a particle, and sometimes they just go as a wave bathing everybody who is receptive to it. So, you know, when you start to live this philosophy and this science, because not just philosophy, but you, you're living the science and philosophy of quantum mechanics, quantum fields of energy, infinite fields of intelligence and love. And all of a sudden, then life takes on a whole different meaning. And one thing to say it, but it's another thing to experience it, where you realize, whoa, things really change when I'm doing this. So it's very, we're so fortunate. And that in chiropractic that we, you know, when I said it earlier, we touch on the mental part, the chemical part, the neurologic part, the emotional part, the spiritual part. You know, it's when you think about chiropractic, it's very, very comprehensive. Now, most people have reduced it to a mechanism. That's unfortunate in the profession that in some ways we, uh, you know, it's, it's programs like this that bring back what we're about. And that's all I'm going to say. But, you know, to, to minimize it to a, um, to just a, a mechanism, really, they miss the boat. People will miss the boat on what this big picture is. And the founders, DD and uh, and BJ, but they were on on it. They they knew what they were up to. Mm. You read some of the early writings. I mean, holy smokes! I mean, they were all mystics. They were they were both mystics. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's parts of the context and the writing that's still ahead of the game, right? Um, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. The um, and so we, we briefly talked about, and I just want to remind the listening audience, I will have a link in the show notes uh, to access the documentary about Jay's work called Life Adjusted. It's absolutely a beautiful piece of work uh, that starts off with this incredible story and then leads through the process. I, uh, I, I support you wholeheartedly to sit down and make sure you have a box of Kleenex with you when you sit down, because it will, <laughs> imp- it, it will impact yeah. you. Yeah. If, if you're not moved while you're watching that, you should check down and check your pulse. Uh, you're definitely distracted. You're not, you're not being present if you're not moved to your core. So that link. <laughs> and, the, and the reason I'm bringing this back into the fold is uh, because we just kind of, you know, mentioned it a little brief and then, and then it went away is um, the stories that uh, Sean, the the producer, the director, chose to focus on from Jay's life, from Jay's work, are, um, for me, representative, which was the brilliance of of the outline of the documentary, of what most people get to experience. Well, unfortunately, most beings on this planet, right? Um, but since right now only humans are listening to the podcast, I'll speak to that one sector of, of, of the populace. And that is challenges, traumas that we have experienced. And these traumas that are then locked into the nerve system. And how do we move through these traumas to become whole and better instead of running the trauma, which keeps us locked in the fear mode, uh, and again, so this, this documentary Life Adjusted just explores and unpacks this process in the most beautiful way through storytelling and then the practical application of doing so, going through the healing journey of horses and people that were, have been hurt, traumatized, and healed. Yep. So taking that context into this conversation, um, trauma is a big topic, yet the um, various ways that we experience, right? So, uh, you know, the classic term in, in today's society that's been out there for a number of years now, PTSD. So I have a charge around that because the D, right? Uh, we live in this allopathic world that wants to pathologize everything and normalize pathology, right? Versus the three first letters are totally appropriate. And again, I'm speaking from my perspective, which is PTS, right? Post-traumatic stress post, meaning after 
you quite frankly, after you had your ass handed to you, right? Whatever that may be, you spent time in the military, you experienced a violent crime, you experienced a direct trauma to yourself, an assault, right? I, I, and when I speak that way, I don't mean to be uh, uh, diminishing by any means. I'm just saying it's not a disorder. It's not a disease state. Um, and it's not meant to be treated. It's meant to be listened to, learned from, discovered the gifts, which I know that's a challenge for some people that are still in the trauma, but there are gifts in it. And then how do we integrate it into our cells of our being to move forward stronger? So that was the context to the listening audience. Now it's the question to you, my friend. What, um, yeah, take us down that road. Unpack that. When somebody's experienced trauma, I'll leave it there. Yeah, you know, they're, they're carrying that pack. I always say they're carrying a backpack on their back and they, they carry around that extra bag of rocks and, uh, and it's real to them. I, I have huge compassion because it's so real to them, repeating and reliving the story over and over. And it's like a loop. They're in this loop. And, you know, the, the wonderful part about chiropractic is it interrupts it interrupts the pattern momentarily and then they have an opportunity uh by through care chiropractic care having a different perspective where rather than being wrapped up and identified with the story they're able to pull away a little bit and realize oh the story is just that it's a narrative they're running a narrative and then uh, they repeat the narrative and then the next day they repeat the narrative and we said it earlier today, for every thought you think, you produce a biochemical equivalent, and then you keep feeling this stress response at all different levels, in the brain itself, and in the neural chemistry, and in your belly, and in your breath. And so you, we, we perpetuate that um, through the narrative. The, and the uh, part of it being a disease process, you hit the nail on the head, that you can recover. You, you can recover. You can discover what were the lessons and what needed to be learned. And that's hard for people to digest, especially in the midst of the crisis or the panic or the fear. It's like, it's hard for them to take that in. But I've watched, and I know you've watched enough people realize, oh my gosh, what I learned as a result of this has been pretty, pretty amazing. So, so you know, the fact that um, people suffer with this is, you know, I always say you're down in the well and then if you look up, you know, you start to see the light and there's a rope there and chiropractic will help pull you up and out of that. And in part, along with breath, along with meditation, along with the deepening the understanding of philosophy, that there is a philosophy of life and, um, and that you're going to begin to incorporate this. Um, so, you know, people, people get really, really tied up. The other, the other aspect of this, which is uh, challenging, is that the momentum of chemistry, that when you're thinking negatively, if you're thinking stress, anxiety, fear, worry, and you're producing that chemistry, that chemistry uh, has momentum. And this is, the, this is the complexity of trauma, is that it's one thing for us to give the nervous system an opportunity to be free. I always think of it like clearing an Etch-A-Sketch, that mm. when you had a when you were a kid, you shook the Etch-a-Sketch and you had a clean slate. But what's different in the body is that the neural chemistry has got its own momentum and it habituates, meaning that you've been doing this thing over and over and over. That's all you know how to do. And even though you adopt a new mental process that's positive, the chemistry will keep running. That's the importance of the nutrition, of fasting, of cleansing, of breath that to reinforce good neural chemistry, that in itself is a science all, all onto itself of helping people to recover. I say recover slash discover, because in the process of this, they learn huge, huge uh, bits of information about who they are, their body, and in order to be able to sustain the healing process. Beautiful, thank you, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to add to that, which is uh, it was just a remembering uh, part of the conversation I had from this interview the other day in the summit that I was on, which was um, the impact of labels, right? So um, 
if, if I end up having a traumatic experience in my life and I go see a typical practitioner and they go, oh my gosh, you have symptoms of PTSD. So here's a label. Now I have PTSD or you have sugar imbalance. You are now a diabetic. Uh, you have changes in your <laughs> joint structures. You are now an arthritic. And, and to watch what happens to people. And, and before I had my teachers to wake me up, I ran some of these patterns too. So I'm not preaching, I'm, I'm reminding, right? The, the listening audience. So ladies and gentlemen, please understand the, the detrimental power of labels because you then become um, auto-domesticated. Somebody might say it to you first and that could be anything like you're a crappy singer. Okay, well, I'm a crappy singer. You've now just bought into a story uh, and you might be a phenomenal singer, right? So um, I have, I am, you're now locking that into your reality permanently, permanently, not forever, permanently, as long as you keep locking it into your reality, right? As long as you're willing to come out of that reality with the right help and tools, you can shift anything that was considered permanent, right? <clears throat> However, when you claim it, so what Jay was saying was this momentum of the body chemistry, one of the things, so the power of talk therapy is nice, but it's super limited because it's only dealing from the chin up, right? In the mind, it hasn't addressed the story in the cells of the body, the memory and the energetics, the memory in the tissue and the body chemistry, right? So the tools that help shift that as well. That's why it's an entire, uh, a, a multifaceted complex to clear out the system. Then we can learn, heal, grow and evolve, right? Not just, and this is so back to the label, too many people that I watch, and, and I know Jay has as well, is um, I'm a survivor, right? Now, initially, that's great. But if years later, you keep saying it, you're still stuck, right? And, <laughs> right? and, this, and this, so, um, this isn't a judgment. This is a, this is a call to action to go to the next level, right? I'm a survivor, whatever that was, this traumatic experience, um, this, this you know, health state, a lot of people who experience cancer and now they're cancer survivors and I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. When will you go from surviving to thriving, right? Surviving is great. We got to get out of the trauma, get out of the stress. But if you stay in survival, you'll never experience the beauty of life, right? So Jay, how do you assist people that are still stuck in survival mentality of any concept um, and to, to move into thriving? Well, I, I give them the imagery of living below the horizon, it's like living underground and that, you know, that you've developed all these coping mechanisms through your language, through uh, just behavior. And, uh, you know, a lot of them are destructive. A lot of them are very protected and vigilant. And then coming out of that is living above the horizon. All of a sudden you see the sun coming up and you see start to appreciate the sun, the sky, the stars, and you realize, oh, geez, my perception has changed. Below the horizon, you're living underground, you're buried, it's claustrophobic. Above the horizon, you start to discover that there's a life out there to be lived, and you have to let go of, we've all done this on ropes courses, you know, you've got to let go of where you are and allow a new vision to emerge. And that you're part of that vision. You get to envision what is it that I want to see? What is it that I want to produce? What type of art? What type of music? How do I want to interact with my loved ones? And you start asking better questions. So, you know, and this can take any form. But, you know, for me, it is a matter of asking better questions of what would life look like if, you know, I brought joy to the table every day? I try to bring joy every day or humor that I'm going to bring joy and humor to the table every day, no matter what's going on. And some crap can be going on. It may be challenging to find the humor, but when you do, it speeds up the process of, of what you're, what you're dealing with. And so below the horizon, above the horizon, and that you're going to shift that, that flip takes place when you realize you have the potential, the wherewithal to do it. And that you start to vision holding a new vision for yourself and the possibility of having a different life that it that was meant for you, that was meant for you, and it's of your own creation. And um, that's a that's a wonderful gift to give mm. someone. Mm. Beautiful. I, I I love the 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 metaphor. 
uh, metaphor slash reality, right? Um, the the visual perspective, yeah. but the, the truth in, in the unfoldment of that. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. as you're listening to the wisdom pearls that Jay's sharing, <clears throat> Know that you can, uh, and again, I'll have all these links in the show notes. So Jay, uh, quote unquote, drops these wisdom pearls on a regular basis on his channels, like an Instagram and, and in other places that you can find him. Uh, we'll have a link to his website. You can also see where he's at, where he's teaching to engage with him. Uh, the link to Life Adjusted. So you can really, I encourage you to sit with this beautiful documentary, you'll get a, another uh, level of understanding who this man is that you've been listening for the last 40 some odd minutes. The beauty of this man, what he has um, brought to so many lives, mine and ugh, tens, hundreds of thousands of people around the world uh, and not just people, but four legs as well. Um, four legs, no legs, two legs. <laughs> Uh, he, he's, he's served. If it's, it's, if it's still got a pulse and a, and some respiration, Jay's put his hands on it. Um, <laughs> um, and to, yeah. So the, the, the joy, the love, the compassion, um, because of his life, because of what he's been through and the growth that he constantly does within his own self to then turn around and bring this to humanity right? That's the gift that he brings. So please stay engaged with him. I'll have all those links underneath uh, this episode in the show notes. Uh, and you can click and follow on in whatever those capacities that serve you. Um, and I, Jay, I want to thank you for your presence in my life, my friend. I want to oh. thank you for everything you do and yeah. have done for chiropractic, for humanity, for the, the, the um, non-two-legged world, to bring the, the respect and compassion for them were, uh, you know, where the two legs weren't uh, honoring this animal kingdom. Um, you know, the love and the peace that you bring and, and the expansion of consciousness as you walk your life. So thank you for that. Thank you for your commitment to be here on the show. So thank we can you. have this conversation. And uh, so in closing, do you, uh, any last thing that's in your heart that you want to share with the audience before we come to a wrap? Well, what, what's in my heart is the fact that it was mutual that our, uh, there was obviously a mutual respect between the two of us, but I got as much from you as I'm sure, and, and probably more in many ways uh, from you, uh, Lou. Just, uh, I can remember watching you speak and you put on the song Salisbury Hill. Mm. And uh, this was years ago, but way back. And I remember about the Eagle taking flight. And I, I just, from that moment, I said, oh, this guy and I are going to be friends for the rest of our life. Mm. And, you know, such is the way in chiropractic because of the depth of what we're doing. And you realize, I know you have traveled the same road as me in your own way, you know, and, but our roads, you know, we're heading in the same direction. And I, uh, I just wanted you to know that this was a mutual sharing today. And, um, and I, 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 I appreciate, I love and appreciate you. I just want you to know. Oh, thank you, sir. Grateful for that. I yeah. appreciate you. Safe journeys on the rest of your transition across the country. I will. I will. And, All uh, right. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you, sir. M many blessings. We'll talk soon. Ciao, ciao. All right. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to the Dow Living Podcast, The Art of Living. Now go to lucorletto.com, L-O-U-C-O-R-L-E-T-O.com to receive your free training the operator's manual for your vehicle. See, when you buy a phone, you get a manual. When you buy a car, you get a manual. When you entered your body, no manual. Let me teach you how it's really designed to work. Also, help me help others and share this podcast far and wide. And subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Until next time, abundant blessings.